One of the very important aspects of technical difficulty is to understand that if you are confronted with a problem that is difficult just because it's fast, there are certain situations in music where the problem is not the fingers, but tone management. There are many examples on the flute repertoire, particularly in the orchestral repertoire, where the problem of some of these fast passages is actually the tone or the articulation. But I'm going to be referring only to pure finger coordination and synchronization, okay? So if a passage is difficult because your fingers need to move really fast and you can't do it, this applies to that, okay? We'll talk a little later on the function of a slow practicing. But let me start with this. It is part of the traditional teaching of music in general that when you're confronted with a difficult, fast technical passage, the strategy is to start slow and gradually building the speed and for that passage. So you play the entire passage slowly and then gradually increasing the speed. While that might work, I believe that is not the most effective way of doing it. And again, let me reiterate that I'm talking about things that are just difficult because require high speed. And the reason is the, follow, that the following. Um, if you want to master a skill, like moving your fingers at high speed in a synchronized manner, that's what you need to practice. You need to practice high speed synchronization. Um, and this has some pretty important foundation in, uh, in neuroscience, actually. So we know, for instance, that when you move your fingers at a certain speed, even if you are doing the same thing and you change your speed, that information gets stored in a different part of your brain. Let me give you an example. So if I do this, right? So if I start that passage and I do, right? That goes in one part of your brain. Then if I do, it's probably migrating in where it's stored. And then as I speed up, and then while for us, our cortex, our intellectual thinking process is telling us it's exactly the same music, from the point of view of motor control, each one of those is different for your brain. And so when I am playing this, your brain doesn't recognize this to be the same. It's not, because it's not. What I am coordinating here is a succession of individual notes at a certain speed. So speed is part of the equation. Speed is part of the difficulty. And therefore, instead of playing a whole passage slow and gradually faster, while you might solve the problem, I have found that the people with the most remarkable techniques I have met, my teachers and other performers, don't use that methodology as much uh, for this particular problem. And we know now why. Why it doesn't work or why it takes so long is because your brain is learning each time that you change the speed a different thing. So what I suggest instead is what I call segmentation. Segmentation is a technique that I'm going to explain to you that consists, consists in taking a passage that is difficult because it's fast and dividing it in segments that are easy by themselves. But I am playing always at the same speed or very close to the ideal speed. I do not, once I learn the notes and I know what the notes are supposed to be, I see no much further benefit in playing slow. Let me be very clear. If you're working with tone issues or intonation or phrasing, yes, please go slow because that is really helpful. It gives your brain more time to process that information. But if you are trying to solve a problem that is strictly high speed motion in your fingers, doing it slowly 
won't solve the problem. So what you can do instead is go short. But there's a, an art to do this. It's not just random uh, you know, shortness. So how is this managed? What you are going to do is you're going to take the given passage and play it as far as you can without making any mistakes at the speed or very close to the ideal speed. And to uh, exemplify this, I'm going to use the opening scale of the beautiful solo by uh, Daphnis uh, by Ravel um, that uh, it's often uh, a moment of hesitation on the, on the players, okay? I'm going to use that opening scale to exemplify how I would treat this process of playing this. So my first run would be very slow, of course. I'm reading the notes. So it would be about here. Right, so I'm gonna play that and I have it, I know what the notes are. Now, I know I can play the whole thing at up speed. I, I know I'm gonna screw up and I'm, I'm avoiding as much as I can mistakes. So what I'm gonna do is try two or three notes first by that speed. So it's gonna be about the speed. Now, I can do that. I can do that consistently 100% of the time. It would be quite uh, surprising to me that I couldn't play La Cidore, La Cidore, and um, in a reliable fashion for many, many times. Um, and so that would be a good segment, isn't it? So I already practiced the first segment of it. Easy. Now, what would be the next one? If I try to do the next four or five notes, that's difficult. So what I'm gonna do is have a shorter segment. That's a simple motion. It's only two notes and it's very easy to control. So I have segment number one. There's no chance I'm gonna make a mistake. Segment number two. Not a chance I can make a mistake. And segment number three, not a chance I can make a mistake there. All right? So what you discover then is that first, I'm programming the motion, even though I'm not playing all the notes, but the notes I'm playing, I'm playing them up to speed already. So I'm already creating a neural connection of coordination, synchronization between my air and the motion of my hands and my fingers. So I already have an advantage. Even though I can't yet play the whole thing in one shot, I am practicing the little segments up to speed. More importantly than that, each one of them is very easy. So the stress of playing this is coming down already. I'm playing three easy segments. Also, when you think about how easy each one of them is, you're not going to spend hours playing this because each segment is very easy, right? So you have three little segments that are very easy. Now, at some point, you might find that you can do only two segments. In fact, that's what I do. And the way I think about these solos in two segments, I do, it's very unlikely I would make an, a, a mistake there. Uh, and then the second little segment, so I have a long segment and a short segment of three notes. Now, this is very personal. It will depend on your technical skills. The more you practice, the more technique you are doing in your daily life, the longer these segments can be, okay? But even the most skillful players would benefit from doing segmentation. Okay, so now the question is, how we stitch them back together, right? So how I'm gonna make the music to sound like what it's supposed to sound. So let's think about three segments only, okay? So I'm gonna go first segment, second, and third, right? Only three segments. Each one of them is easy. That's fundamental, by the way. I, let me reiterate that. It's fundamental that each segment is easy. It's the only criteria I use. I don't use rhythm. I don't use melodic patterns. I don't use chunking. I don't use uh, symmetrical patterns, nothing. My only concern in deciding the segment is, can I play them a hundred times and never make a mistake? And if the answer is no, that segment is too long. 
but you see I'm already gaining that I'm practicing up speed and practicing easy things that I can control. So that's the rule of segmentation. It's not a rhythmical decision how long this thing is. It's not a melodic decision. It's strictly how far can you play with no mistakes. Okay? So an easy segment.